my garden is in Mesa, Arizona, zone 9B. And the great thing about gardening in Arizona is that you can garden year round. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you my five favorite things that are growing right now. I'll show you how it's growing, tell you a little bit about it, show you when I planted it, and give you some tips for harvesting. If we haven't met before, my name's Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. The first of February's favorites has got to be citrus. We are right in the middle of citrus season in the low desert, and there are so many different types of citrus that are ready to harvest. I grow at least 18 different varieties of citrus on my suburban HOA lot. Growing citrus in containers and dwarf varieties of citrus allows me to grow a wide variety of citrus. Here's a look at the types of citrus that I'm harvesting right now from my yard. A lot of these were planted between five and 10 years ago, and I'm just starting to get really good harvest from a lot of these trees. There are several other citrus, especially the ones in containers that have been planted in the last few years, and I'm just getting a few citrus from those. Some years you have a really big harvest, other years, not so much. So how can you tell if citrus is ripe? Taste is the best measure of whether or not citrus is ready to pick. Learn the approximate time when it's ripe and then begin sampling it. And often the longer the fruit is on the tree, the more sweet it will become. And once you pick that fruit off the tree, it's not going to ripen anymore. So if you haven't harvested it and it begins to soften and fall off the tree, that's telling you that it is at the end of the harvest window and it's time to harvest the remaining fruit. The next plant that we're loving right now is cauliflower. It has been a surprisingly good year this year for cauliflower. It needs at least two months of cool weather to mature. And it's a cool weather crop in the brassica family. Most of the cauliflower in my garden was planted in mid-October and I succession planted a couple more in December. So those still have a while before they're ready. But right now, the bulk of my cauliflower is ready to harvest. The purple that you sometimes see on the head in white types of cauliflower is caused by sunlight. And so if you want to prevent that discoloration, clip the leaves over the top of the head with a clothespin. Pretty simple, right? To harvest the cauliflower at the best time, you wanna keep a close eye on it. When that cauliflower head is about six inches across and nice and tight, start looking at the underneath of that head. And when those lower florets begin to separate, you'll know that that head has gotten as large as it's gonna get before it begins to separate. If you harvest cauliflower too late, those florets begin to separate and they actually begin to flower and the taste deteriorates quite a bit. To harvest the cauliflower, you can twist it off or you can cut the stem below several sets of leaves with a sharp knife. Unlike broccoli, cauliflower isn't going to grow anymore. So once you've harvested the head, go ahead and remove the whole plant by cutting it at soil level and leaving those roots intact to add organic matter to the soil. My next February favorite are two of the cool season herbs that I can't imagine a winter garden without, cilantro and dill. We love using both of these and the best part, the beneficial insects also flock to both of these herbs. Cilantro is really easy to start from seed. I typically just sprinkle several seeds in the, uh, whatever squares that I'm planting cilantro in. Then that cilantro is going to grow up and once it's several inches high, I begin harvesting. I just cut it back to soil level and harvest as much as we need. I usually add cilantro to three or four areas of the garden so that I always have cilantro when I need it. As temperatures begin to warm up, that cilantro is going to bolt. That means that the cilantro is now going to produce the flowers that attract all the beneficial insects to my garden. And then those flowers develop into coriander, which is another spice that I love. And then I can save those seeds to plant next season in my garden. 
Dill is similar to cilantro in that it has a large tap root and does best started from seed. If you get transplants for dill, handle the roots gently and that will keep it from bolting sooner. I usually grow two different types of dill in my garden. I grow bouquet dill, which has really large blooms and makes excellent dill seed. And then I also grow fern leaf dill. It's slower to bolt and has a lot of the dill weed that I love using in my kitchen. Butterflies, ladybugs, bees, and many other pollinators are attracted to dill bloom. I plant both dill and cilantro beginning in October from seed. And I'll usually sprinkle a few seeds in the ground in December as well to give me a little bit of a succession planting for both crops. My next favorite crop for February is cabbage. Cabbage harvests are beginning and in my family, we use a lot of cabbage and we love when we can have it fresh from the garden. So cabbage were planted from transplant back in October. I've succession planted cabbage so that we have a continual harvest for the next four to six weeks. Cabbage is pretty simple to grow, but you need to make sure that you give it plenty of room, plenty of water, which mother nature has done for me this year, and also regular feeding. I usually feed cabbage about once a month during the growing season with a fish emulsion fertilizer. Because we've had some cold weather this year, that actually improves the cabbage taste. I like to harvest the cabbage when the heads are well formed and firm. And I cut at the base with a sharp knife. If you'd like a second harvest of cabbage, leave those outer leaves in place. Brussels sprout like mini cabbages will form. I usually harvest the whole head because I'm ready to put something else in its place. When you first plant cabbage in late fall when it's still warm, oftentimes we will have problems with cabbage moths. So covering the cabbage or using BT on those cabbage leaves will help with those cabbage moths early in the season. I love planting onions, radishes, and nasturtiums near my cabbage to help deter pests. My favorite companion plant for cabbage is usually Etoy onions. I put them around all of my cabbage plants. And finally, my last favorite for February is tomatoes. February is definitely a month when we're thinking about tomatoes here in the low desert. I plant most of my tomatoes during monsoon season in July and August. Those monsoon planted tomatoes are really coming into production during January and February. So I have to cover them if we get a freeze like we have been but I get a lot of tomatoes from those monsoon planted tomatoes during these months. February is also the month when we think about planting our next round of tomatoes. So once the danger of frost has passed, that's when I am going to be planting out more tomatoes in different areas of my garden. So there are a couple of tips for planting tomatoes here in the low desert. Definitely pay attention to those planting windows right after the danger of frost has passed, and again in monsoon season. Other than planting at the right time, having good soil is probably one of the best things you can do to ensure that you have a healthy crop of tomatoes. Choosing the right varieties, typically smaller sized tomatoes, and then providing shade during the hotter months and covering them during frost events during the colder months. During the cooler temperatures, it can be hard to get those tomatoes to ripen outside because temperatures are cool. So once I see that first flush of color on the tomatoes, then I harvest those tomatoes and bring them inside where it's a little bit warmer and they will ripen up quicker. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my five favorite crops that I'm growing here in the low desert of Arizona during the month of February. Let me know in the comments what's growing where you live. Thank you so much for watching.